Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Demise here, showing off the potential of the latest TCG expansion set called Battle Styles. So first off, I would just like to say a big thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my YouTube channel recently. And if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and that notified bell as it helps me a very, very much. So without further ado guys, make sure you hit that like button and comment on what you enjoyed the most of this video or you'd like to see in future videos. Thanks for watching guys and let's get straight into the action. All right guys, so what we have here is the Battle Styles expansion and it is the latest from the, the Pokemon franchise. I actually opened up a few booster packs recently in a video that I uploaded on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't sussed that out, make sure you go check it out. It was a great opening. A lot of the cards are really, really cool. I'm really impressed with this card set. The set really sets a new tone for the competitive scene. As you will see, as I showcase the rapid and the single strike Pokemon cards and trainer cards throughout this card list unveiling. Anyway, let's look, let's get into the looking at the main cards and what they can bring to the table. All right, guys. So as you can see there, we have the Battle Styles Sword and Shield on the top of the Cerebi.net page. And let's get straight into it. So the Battle Styles set is the fifth Pokemon Sword and Shield set and features a shift to a focus of the Sword and Shield DLC. So a lot of these cards are revolved around Urshifu and all the cards that got, or the new Pokemon I should say, that got released in the, the Isle of Armour DLC. First off, we have got the Krikotoon V, which I've got on this page right here. So this Krikotoon V looks pretty cool. It's got exciting stage as its ability and Exazor, which is a flip a coin. If heads, this attack does 80 more damage. So it can potentially do for three energies, 160 damage which is not too shabby. You can get one double colorless and one grass energy. So it comes online pretty damn fast. And obviously the exciting stage, once during your turn, you may draw cards until you have three cards in your hand. If this Pokemon is in the active spot, draw cards until you have four cards in your hand instead. So the, the card overall can be used probably similar to what Zacian can be, just with not applying the energies to the Pokemon, but it can still draw cards at a reasonable rate. All right, so then we're moving on to the next one that I found in the, down the list. You've got your Rubies, your Cherims, you've got your, your Rapid Strike Pokemon, which is probably the newest thing that we've seen with your Carnivines. So obviously I'll explain later in the video what they do and how they are effective in the latest meta in the competitive scene. The next one I've got here is a Victim. V. So Victini V is a Pokemon that's already been released before. It's a fire type Pokemon, but it's been slightly changed with this card. So we've got V Bullet and Flare Shot. If your opponent's active Pokemon is a Pokemon V, this attack does 50 more damage. So for essentially 60 damage for one energy, I mean, it's not too shabby. At least you're getting off an attack damage move, say, on, if you're going second and not going first. It's not too bad at all. Uh, Flare Shot, discard all energy from this Pokemon. Obviously, the downside is that you can't use two double colorless, so you can't just keep putting it back on each turn. You're going to have to basically discard both those cards and then restart again for 120 damage all right and so then next down we have got what's called victini v max so this is nice for spreading flames you can go and attach up to three three fire energy cards from your discard pile to your pokemon in any way you like i mean that's it's a really good setup card you can have other fire type pokemon on your bench so obviously this suits a really good fire deck and essentially setting up whether it's like say rest your own charizard or something like that it's actually not a bad move for one energy obviously so you can actually set up your pokemon on your bench make sure you run victini in the back not in the front if if possible just get it online so that uh basically after your third fourth turn you're sort of relying heavily on on your Pokemon that are getting set up from the Victini VMAX. All right, so now we've got the max victory. So if your opponent's active Pokemon is a Pokemon a V, this attacker does 120 more damage. So I'm not going to say it's crazy amounts of damage from this Pokemon, but it's a good setup mod. It's got a nice amount of HP. It does the job. Like it's actually 100, it's 100 plus 120. So it's like 220 damage, which is not too bad. And it, like end of the day, it's only two, two uh, energies. Its retreat cost is two as well um so end of the day it's not a bad card overall all right so moving on to the next card so we come down the list and then we come to what's called the one thing that i love the most about this set is you've got the flapple v and the flapple v max i'll just get rid of these really quickly for some reason my flapple is not there so now we've got the flapple v so flapple v you've got sour spit and we've got wing attack so wing attack does 120 damage for three energies the grass and two uh, two and uh, a double color well, it's, it's a single double color so i should say and then we've got the, the sour spit for one grass energy which is during your opponent's next turn the defending pokemon's attacks cost two energies more so in that sense you can basically bide yourself time if you believe that the other pokemon on the other team hasn't been set up quick enough and they've got some uh some damaging moves that only require one energy 
that can come in handy really well. Retreat cost is really low and its weakness is two times to the fire. So then we move on to the Fluffle VMAX. Now the Fluffle VMAX has got GMAX rolling, so it's for three energies, one grass and a double colors. This attack does tenless damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So ideally it's 250 damage from the start. If you can get this thing set up really fast, and you can anticipate the enemy's Pokemon on the bench that hasn't been set up and you can sweep its active Pokemon. Essentially, you could really wreak havoc on this guy for a while. Um, obviously, you could probably apply some certain item cards to uh, either buff its attack damage or its HP either way. But 250 damage is pretty respectable for the starting point. So retreat, trust, retreat cost, we have got the three energies to retreat and obviously its weakness is to fire again. That is the two fapples, which are awesome. So we'll go down. I've actually already talked about the Victini V and the Victini V Max. I'm a bit all over the shop at the moment. We've got the Entai here, which is really nice. We've got the, the Tapig evolution line with Tapig, Pig Knight, and Emball with the single strikes. I'll just bring him up and have a brief look at him. Basically, with the single strike, its ability is your single strike Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon before applying weakness and resistance. So 180 HP, 130 damage on Heat Crash. Yes, it is two, it's a single double colors and two fire energies. However, it's a respectable amount of damage. You can, essentially, it's 160 damage according to its ability. Uh, and you can also buff it again, whether or not you want to give it, like I said earlier, like another HP card, item card, or you can apply a damaging move as well or even a supporter card like professor kukoi's and giving that that extra 20 damage so it's a respectable pokemon i have actually pulled some of those in my tcg online and i'm trying to establish if i can make a deck based around the single strike or based around the rapid strike uh setup at the moment all right so anyway we're going to move down now to the next pokemon which i believe is going to be probably like we've got some pretty cool pokemon here we've got Empoleon v so i've actually this is all over this shop i don't know what i've done wrong here guys i apologize in advance all right. So we've got the Apollyon V here, water type Pokemon, rapid strike. So as long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, your opponent's basic Pokemon in play have no abilities except for Pokemon with a rule box, right? So that's Pokemon V, Pokemon GX, etc. have rule boxes. So it's got Swelling Slice, which is moving energy from this Pokemon to one of your bench Pokemon. Ideally, you could actually either run a water and normal deck. You can actually run the, I believe you can run the double colors on this Pokemon with one water energy and then use Swelling Slice for 130 damage. It's not crazy amounts of damage, but if you have the Pokemon on the bench, say, a Snorlax or something that's a normal type Pokemon and it literally says there move a energy it doesn't say you can't move special energies it just says a energy card so I believe you should be able to move the double colors to whether it's a Snorlax or something else that can utilize that double colors and essentially if Empoleon V looks like it's in trouble and it's going to faint or going to get one hit from the opposition ensure you've got like a switch card or something like that it's retreat cost is only two energy cards anyway and that way you can move your energies to other Pokemon if you feel like you're in trouble and start getting them set up so you're not wasting your energies to the discard pile. So Empoleon's actually not a bad looking card. I've actually used it myself and uh, have to use it in future decks. All right, so then we come back down to... We're going through this. we got the Rapid Strikes, as I was saying before. These are the Rapid Strikes with the Octuary, the Remoraid. We have it in the Shinx, Luxio, and Luxray as well. It's got some pretty cool abilities. I'll just give that a quick sus. Actually, no, there's no abilities here, but you got the Electrostat. This attack does 40 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Do not apply weakness and resistance for bench Pokemon. Switch this Pokemon with one of your bench. So for one energy, now it's not too bad. You can do 40 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, 150 HP is pretty respectable. Then you got the Scar Strikes. If your opponent's active Pokemon already has any damage counter, on it this attack does 100 more damage so you could do 200 damage from this card and considering what it is that for like two energies as well is just ridiculous i mean it doesn't take long to set up you can just basically get it down in two turns basically you, you can literally if you can pick the coin flip and you go first you can put down your electric energy first turn nothing happens second turn you sh no one should be able to faint this in one turn it's like 150 hp so it's still respectable and then get down the uh the 200 damage if possible all right one retreat cross which is super awesome even though you're not going to really need that we've got electro step and obviously the weakness is two times two fighting all right so now we're moving down we now come back to another v pokemon which is the tapu coco v now it's got electro ball which is 40 damage for one energy and it's got the spiral thunder which is 20 plus damage so this attack does 40 more damage for each energy attached to each of your opponent's pokemon so an example of this would be obviously versing a fire deck where they're using kiawi or something like that where they've got um or even a welder card where they've set up some of their fire type pokemon super fast with fire energies if you can play this tapu coco v correctly or properly it can come out and do a crap load of damage and it could basically 
basically faint a really strong or high HP Pokemon on the opposition team. Obviously, one retreat cost and the two times witness to fighting. I've actually got this in the VMAX in my TCG online and it's quite respectable in that sense. So here's the VMAX here. So the VMAX version of the Tapu Koko max shot for three energies. If you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, their active Pokemon is now paralyzed. So 180 damage, they're paralyzed. It's really good. It's retreat cost is basically non-existent what it's saying to this. And obviously it's two times weakness to fighting still. So 320 HP is respectable. I think that could be quite a well-used uh, card in the competitive scene if used in the correct deck. I've, as I said, I've got this mix with a Battle Styles Single Strike, I think it is, deck at the moment that I'm mucking around with. And it's definitely a cool looking card. All right. So, all right. So that's just something we'll move on from those. And we're going to go down now scrolling down the list got heaps of other random pokemon like meowstic and esper and stuff like that but the next main one that i've noticed is a mimikyu v now i haven't actually pulled this myself in game unfortunately or real life for that matter in my battle souls pack opening video but i would love to pull this in the near future so mimikyu v has got dummy doll which is ability when you play this card from your hand onto your bench during your turn you may prevent all damage done to this mimikyu v by tax from your opponent's pokemon until the end of your opponent's next turn so that's pretty damn good and it's got for one energy you got jealous eyes put three damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon for each prize card your opponent has taken. So from what I can gather from this, generally in the mid to late game of playing in competitive, it could be quite an essential card. I don't see why you couldn't use it. For me personally, I'm unsure on this card yet. I haven't tested it, so I'd have to go practice with it and see if it's viable and, and whatnot. Weakness is two times the dark. Retreat cost is not too bad and it's resistance to fighting. So then next on the list, we have Necrozma V, 220 HP, quite respectable. Prismatic Ray for one psychic energy. This attack does 20 damage to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Do not apply weaknesses and resistance for bench Pokemon. So, I mean, it's okay. Obviously, if you're versing a deck, like, it, it basically getting that off quite early so if you were to go second in the the order of events you could get off some decent damage quite early to two pokemon and essentially just basically chip at their team while they're trying to set up their pokemon with whether it's supporter cards or energies or whatever and then you got special laser if this pokemon has any special en energy attached to it this attack does 120 damage more that's 220 damage on special laser special laser sorry for three energies and that is not too bad at all two times a week to darkness and a two dark, so not darkness. Two times the darkness. Two time, two times weak to dark type Pokemon. The, th the retreat cost is a little bit higher, and then obviously the resistance at minus thirty four fighting. All right. So this is when we're starting to get into the good stuff, guys. So we've got the man keys and the primates with single strikes as well. We've got the rapid strikes and the min few and the min shell. Even Colossal, I've noticed, is, can be quite effective in this deck. I actually tried to run him in my deck recently. Wild Tackle takes a lot of energy, but obviously it's at least one double colorless and you know two energies after that. Uh, the benefits of running the, the Retreat cost as well, you can actually run a Buffing Pad on it and boost its HP up so it's a little bit stronger. And that way it'd be quite tanky for a base card that's not a... Not a base card, a uh, Evolution Stage 2 card that's not a V Pokemon or V Max, etc. So it's Cold Cannon, flip a coin for each energy attached to this Pokemon. This attack does 90 damage for each heads. So you can obviously take the risk and try and go off the Cold Cannon when you've got, say, three energies here, which hopefully if you get enough heads, you'll do a crap load of damage anyway. And then to be on the safe side, you can just always use the Wild Tackle for 200 damage and doing 50 damage to yourself. Two times weak to Grass, no resistance. And that is basically it for the Colossal. Just wanted to mention that card because it could be something underrated, could be used in a particular way, buff it up with some item cards, whatnot, and um, essentially it shouldn't be too bad. All right, so basically going down the list now, you got the Rapid Strike for Lynx, the Single Strike Stone Journal that I have pulled twice, I think, in IRL. And then we come down to Single Strike Urshifu V. So now this bad boy here is probably the main card that this this whole expansion is uh, based around, the Urshifu cards, I should say. So we have got Single Strike Urshifu V with 220 HP. It's a fighting card with its the, ability, uh, the, the moves, Laser Focus and Impact Blow. So Laser Focus, search your deck for up to two fighting energy cards and attach them to this Pokemon, then shuffle your deck. So obviously this website, they can't spell. They keep putting the random J's in there, but that's okay. Anyway, so that's not too bad. Gets them... Gets this Pokemon quite set up really fast, actually. Like, as long as you've got one energy, the next turn you're basically using Impact Blow. However, Impact Blow, during your next turn, this Pokemon can, can't use Impact Blow. 
So it's 180 damage, comes online reasonably fast, and you can basically start sweeping stuff before they start getting set up themselves, hopefully speaking, right? So then after that, you come into the single strike Oshifu VMAX. So you've got beat down for three energies, which is not too bad, as long as you don't evolve him into the VMAX too early so you can utilize his energy uh, acceleration move. So with beat down, it's 100 damage, three energies, it's not too shabby. Then you've got the G Max one blow. It says one energy, but it's actually four on the card. So discard all energy from this Pokemon. This attack's damage isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. So it's 270 damage. Give it something like a simple buff card, like a uh, something that does like an extra 30 damage, or obviously having maybe even having that ember that we we're showing earlier for the extra 30 damage for the single strikes as well would probably come in handy because that could be potentially 300 damage plus another three, another 30 HP. That pretty much basically faints any Pokemon in the game. Like I'm pretty sure the VMAX Charizard is 330 HP as well. So being able to do those two little buffs will basically one hit KO them. You get three prize cards for that and it won't be the end of the world that you've lost four energy cards as such. The other thing too, you can always run a memory capsule as well. So once you use the GMAX one blow, you discard all your cards, you'll have a way to essentially accelerate your cards back on again, as long as you can find ways to get your energies from your discard pile back into your deck or into your hand. Uh, obviously, we've got the two times weakness to psychic on this bad boy, and we've got the three energies for the retreat cost, no resistance, and that pretty much sums up the single strike Oshifu VMAX. All right, so now we're moving on to the rapid strike Oshifu V. Now, this one is a bit different, so it's got Strafe. You may switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. So you have the ability to just go, look, you just come in, do a couple of rapid strikes, and then just yeet it out of there, and you're just gone, right? So it's 30 damage, not too bad. Then we've got the 100 Furious Blows for 150. So obviously, this is going to take a little bit longer to get this guy set up. It's going to take three turns instead of two, opposed to the single strike. Um, however, it's 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 still a nice-looking card. It still does the job for what you would like to do. Like, 150 damage is still respectable, obviously. There's ways to buff it, as I mentioned, like with the item cards and whatnot. Weakness is two times the psychic retreat cost is two energies and no resistance now we're moving on to the vmax version of that now the gal thrust is pretty cool so if this one's moving your bench to the active spot this turn this attack does 120 more damage so for one energy you can do 150 damage to one of their pokemon which is just ridiculous then we have got the gmax rapid flow so discard all energy from this pokemon so it's only three energies instead of four this attack does 120 damage to two of your opponent's pokemon and do not apply weakness and resistance for this bench Pokemon. So, as I said, if you can get this guy online, the Rapid Strike Oshifu VMAX can be quite essential. 120, dim uh, 120 damage to two of their Pokemon is a big blow to them. Uh, then they've got to reassess their strategy as to whether or not they're going to still use those Pokemon, or if they've got um, item cards to heal them, or supporters, which obviously sets some turns back, which then allows you time to reset up your GMAX Rapid Flow again to hit two Pokemon. If you hit two Pokemon that are both VMAXs or are pulling three prize cards, it can be quite a good move. All right, obviously the two retreat cost, the two times weakness to psychic and no resistance to finish that bad boy off. All right, so now we're going into the next card. So just scrolling down the list, so I won't try to skip too much. I was just trying to keep this as fast and flowing as possible. We've got the Hound Doom. I'll just have a quick overlook over him. So Hound Doom V, single strike rule. Once during your turn, you may search your deck for a single strike energy card and attach it to one of your single strike Pokemon. So running the Hound Doom and the Embor V with the single strike Urshifu is actually really quite essential. And it would help dramatically for getting them set up. And it helps them do that extra bit of damage they need to one hit KO Pokemon that are VMAXs and such like that. And Darkness Fang's only 50 damage. So this card for me personally is 100%. You're mainly using it for the ability. Like that's literally it. Like 50 damage is okay, but it's not, you know, for two energies, it's, it's probably the time that you're not essentially setting up your other Pokemon that are more important in this case. Um, weakness is two times the grass, two times uh, two energy cards for the retreat cost. No resistance, 130 HP. All right, so I'm moving on from him. So the next big one we're going to is the Tyranitar V. So when Pokemon... Uh, I don't know why I read that. All right, so the next one is Tyranitar V. We have got the Craggalanch, the Single Strike Crush, and the Weakness, two times the Grass, three energies to retreat, and no resistance. So discard the top four cards off your deck for 240 damage is not not too bad, but let's just hope that you don't have anything important in there or maybe run a, let's just say you want to run a, uh, what's his name? I think it's the Magma or Escargo or, Ma no, not Magma. So yeah, if you want to run the single strike crush, this guy, the top four cards of your deck for 240 damage, ensure you run maybe a Macago or something like that uh, with its ability to ensure that you could probably put the opposite strategy instead of putting a good card at the top of your deck to draw you might want to put a crappier card on the top and when you put the the average card on the top that you don't think you're going to need for this particular battle 
then it could just, at least you know out of the four cards, you're, you're definitely 100% losing something that you don't want anyway, and then you've just got to hope that the other three aren't important cards for 240 damage. Or the alternative is just do the 60 damage with Craglanch and discard the top two cards off your opponent's deck and just really put them at a disadvantage. That's that's all, that's all an alternative for this card. All right, so moving on now. So we're going down the list. We've got the Single Strike Morwheel as well. We've got the Agi Slash, Corviknight V. Now, this is cool. All right, so Corviknight V, we've got Clutch and Sky Hurricane, 30 damage and 190 damage, respectively. During your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon can't retreat for 30, which is not too bad. One Steel Energy, by, by the way, guys. One Steel Energy. Sky Hurricane, during your next turn, this Pokemon can't use Sky Hurricane. So it's 190 damage. It's respectable. It's it's one, It's one. got two times weakness to, uh, to fire. One Energy card for the retreat cost and resistance to grass. Obviously, this bad boy evolves. And then we've got the Corviknight VMAX. So the, Cor the Corviknight VMAX's ability... Lustrous Body prevents all effects of your opponent's Pokemon's abilities done to this Pokemon. That's really cool. I like that. And then we've got the G-Max Hurricane for 240 damage. Basically the same thing. You cannot use this move the following turn, but 240 damage for only three energies, two steals, and one colorless is not bad at all. Retreat cost on this guy too is actually basically nothing. So if you feel like he's in a bit of a situation where we're going, yikes, this guy's going to get taken out. You get, you get him out of there and you tank something else and go from there. So we can go Witness two times the fire and resistance to grass, like I said before. So that is not a bad looking card at all. I'd love to pull out in real life or play that with the TCG online. So hopefully I can get into that bad boy very soon. So the next one we got is the Stoutland V. We're getting pretty close to the end now, guys. Basically, we've got the Double Dip Fangs for three energies and Wild Tackle for four energies, 200 damage and 40 damage, respectively. 30 damage to itself for Wild Tackle and the Double Dip Fangs. If your opponent's basic Pokemon is knocked out by damage from this attack, take one more prize card. Pretty respectable, not too shabby at all. Two times a week to fighting and three energies to retreat. Statland V, I actually pulled that card in real life. It does not too bad. Probably one of the cards towards the end. So we've got other stuff like this. We've got the Brunos. Got camping sets, you know, we've got the escape roads, energy cyclers, XP shares, we've got fan of waves with the rapid strike, Karina's focus as well. Now, the next main thing that I wanted to point out was we've got the rapid strike scroll of swells. Now, this card is this the, the rapid strike Pokemon this card is attached to can use the attack on this card. Attach rapid strike scroll or of swells to one of your Pokemon that doesn't have a Pokemon tool attached to it. So this is quite essential if you're going to run this particular deck, whether it's the rapid strike or the single strike. So what this does is this attack does 30 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon, and that's it for three energies. So basically, I'm guessing it would be a really good card for Urshifu as well. So you're doing 120 damage to two different Pokemon, plus you got the extra 30 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon, which basically you're doing a lot of damage to the opponents. So they've got to really think about whether or not they want to put down bench Pokemon, or they're got to wait until they're ready to set up that Pokemon. Otherwise, they're they've got to anticipate what your Urshifu is going to do because they know now that he's going to do a lot of damage to their bench Pokemon. That's a really cool card. I like that. And then on the flip side, you've got the Single Strike Scholar Scorn, which does for one energy, it is... This attack does 10 more damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So obviously, if it's tanked a bit of damage and you've buffed him up, obviously, this is the item card you have to use. So you can't buff him up at all. On the, like This is the item card you want to use if you want to use this ability. But taking a bit of damage and then dealing it back to them is not too bad either so that's a pretty cool card so then we got the rapid strike style mustard you can only play this card if it is the last card in your hand put a rapid st strike pokemon from your discard pile onto your bench then draw five cards that's pretty respectable i like that it's really good and then the alternative which is a single strike one you can only play this card if it is the last card in your hand search your deck for a single strike pokemon and put it onto your bench then shuffle your deck if you search your deck in this way draw five cards so both pretty cool cards i would definitely find a way to use them in some way we have got the Tower of Darkness and we've got the Tower of Waters as well. There's so many different cards, guys. I could go on forever about these things. So the Tower of Darkness. Once during each player's turn, that player may draw two cards in order to use this effect. That player must discard a single strike card from their hand. And now on the flip side, for the water, for the rapid strike, the retreat cost of each rapid strike Pokemon, both yours and your opponents, is two energies less. So it has its purposes and I'm sure you can find a way to utilize it. We've got the single strike energies and the rapid strike energies as well. I'll just quickly show them on the screen. So this card may only be attached the rapid strike pokemon if this card is attached to anything other than a rapid strike pokemon discard this card as long as this card is attached to a pokemon this card provides two in any combinations of water and fighting energies so that's another thing too you can utilize for the oshifu and whatnot that is a pretty cool card i really like that i really like how they brought that out and then you got the single strike energy which basically does the same thing with fighting and dark energies 
it only provides one energy at a time. But the, the attacks that this Pokemon, this Akado, is attached to do 21 damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So um, that is not too shabby either. That's with the special energies. So then we come down into, we got the full art cards with the stuff I showed you earlier. I've actually pulled this Apollyon V in real life too. Full art's really nice with, with the, the links and stuff like that on it. Um, then we scroll down. We've got some more full arts. We've got the Bruno, the Karina's Focus, Phoebe. Uh, we've got the Mustard. And then we come down to the, the Rainbow V Maxes of these cards. And they look really cool. Even even the, the Urshifu V Max here as well. That is a really nice looking card. Like if, if you basically put that down in a competitive game with TCGO or you had that in real life, you're laughing big time. That's a super cool card. Really, really like that. Obviously the Cheryl and the Rainbow Rare as well. And then we come down we've got the Shinies and the Gold Cards. I have actually pulled an XB Share Gold Card I roll. Couldn't believe I pulled it. It's simply insane. Make sure you check out my Battle Styles pack opening video if you want to see that. It was so freaking cool. Uh, obviously you've got the Artillery Shiny, the Hand Doom to top that off in the Gold Level Ball. And then we have lastly, but not leastly, the Rapid Strike Energies and the Single Strike Energies in the Shiny formats as well. So that pretty much sums up the pack opening, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video very much, like as much as I did making it. It's a really cool expansion set. I'm looking forward to hopefully buying a booster box of these bad boys and open some more up in a new video in the near future. So make sure you don't miss that. Once again, guys, make sure you hit that like, comment, subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Hit up my social links as well, Instagram, Twitter, and Glimish when I do stream over there, which I should be streaming over there a lot more in the near future. If you've got anything you want to see in the next video, guys, please do not hesitate to post that in my Discord as well. I'm literally open when it comes to anything like that. I'm literally quite open when it comes to new ideas or ways I can improve my channel in any way possible. So until the next video, guys, thank you so much for watching once again. And peace out from your boy demise. Catch you later.